Hey everybody, welcome back to Brainiac Baseball's 1983 Detroit Tigers season replay. Today's matchup is between the Cleveland Indians and the Detroit Tigers at Tiger Stadium. On the mound for the Indians today is John Denny, whose record is 6-6 six six with a 350 ERA. And pitching for the Tigers today is Tom Filer, whose record is 2-1 with a 414 ERA. So we're coming off the road from Baltimore, where we took uh, two of three. We only gave up four runs in that series, uh, although we were shut out by Alan Ramirez in game one. So that was kind of a rough one there, but um, we bounced back. We won the last two games of the series. We've had a day off, which you, you know if you saw the last game, we already advanced. And we are on uh, the first of the three-game series here against the Indians, where we're going to face... John Denny, for the fourth time already this season, um, I want to uh, mention before I get to uh, the ball game here today uh, that on the 9th we are uh, doing the amateur draft. And so prior to the beginning of that game, uh, we'll go through and we'll do an um, amateur draft uh, preview so you can see who's available um, and uh, maybe uh, give me some advice on who I should take. Uh, we have a lot of good pitchers in our uh, minor league system, but we don't have a lot of hitters that we can count on for the future. So I think we're going to probably go hitter heavy uh, when the time comes. So, All right, let's uh, go ahead and get started with today's game. As always, I appreciate everyone following along, like and or subscribe to the channel. Uh, just to reiterate once again, uh, there will be contests coming up uh, very soon. I, oh, I really just, I want to reveal what the contest is going to be, but I haven't procured the items yet, so I don't want to uh, call my shot and then be denied in the end. So, uh, but I'm pretty excited about it, and I'm working on it right now. So, okay, Tom Filer on the mound, uh, very minimal uh, plate appearances against him, only three. All of the bullpen is available. We have uh, Roger Weaver back from his... Uh, 10-day stint at AAA, giving him a chance to take a little bit of a break. We sent uh, Dave Gumpy Gumpert uh, back down to AAA, and Roy Thomas is going to stick around in the uh, middle relief role. Okay, and then we have our lineup today versus the right-hander John Denny. Uh, we're going to give Ricky his day off. Um, we try to give him as much time as we can. And uh, the other thing of note is uh, Terry Kennedy in there at catcher today. Okay. Let's go ahead and do the lineup rundown for the Cleveland Indians batting leadoff playing third base is Kevin Romberg. Batting second playing first base is Carl Pegel. Batting third and DHing is Gary Gray. Batting cleanup in right field is Dan Pasqua. Batting fifth in center field is Von Hayes. Batting sixth and catching is Chris Bando. Batting seventh, playing left field is Jerry Turner. Batting eighth, playing second base is Juan Bania. And batting ninth, playing shortstop is Jerry Dibzinski. Let's take a look at Tom Filer. Tom the Defiler. He had a pretty good start his last time out. We'll take a look at his log here momentarily this is his 10th start of the season uh two and one with a 414 era uh, more walks than strikeouts that is terrible opponents are batting 252 against him his fastball tops out at 90 miles an hour his fastball is his best pitch rated an 82 overall rated a 77 so he's a below average pitcher um but he's logging some innings for us we appreciate that until uh Dan Petrie gets back in about, oh, 50 games, I guess. Um, he is uh, 26 years old, and he goes to arbitration in 1984. Real quick, let's look at his log. Uh, his last start did come against Cleveland, and he got the win, so that's good news. He went five in the third innings, giving up seven hits and two runs. He's walked seven in his last two starts while only striking out four, so not great, but... He's shown that he can beat Cleveland, and that's all we need today. Give us five strong innings. We'll turn it over to the bullpen. Here's our Tigers defense today with gold glovers at first, second. Well, just first and second. 
as uh, Ricky Henderson is not in left field. It's Gibby today. And here is Kevin Romberg leading off against Tom Filer. Ground ball, base hit up the middle, and the leadoff man is on. Romberg has 14 stolen bases on the season, so he's capable of uh, taking a bag. And he is gunned down by Kennedy. That was a great pitch by Filer. I was kind of confused. I thought it maybe was strike three. So Romberg gunned down by uh, Kennedy, which uh, just for the hell of it, let's take a look. What is his caught stealing percent? It's 40 percent. That is fairly significant. So good job by him. Okay, here's Carl Pagel with an 0-1 count with one down. Filer strikes him out. <laughs> Carl Pagel is definitely the three true outcome guy. Now here is Gary Gray. You may be wondering, we just saw Tim Norrid. Where did he go? Tim Norrid got sent to the minors uh, for Gary Gray. And I, out of curiosity, I flipped through a few teams and it looks like it's that time of the year where the um, teams are cycling players uh, you know, to the um, major leagues for players who are not performing well. And Gray walks. So there's been a base hit, a strikeout, and a walk so far. With two down, Gray's on first. Here's Dan Pasqua batting 244 with eight home runs. He hits a ground ball to second, and that'll do it. So we go to the bottom of the first. Let's take a look at the Tigers lineup rundown for today. Batting leadoff and playing second base is Sweet Lou Whitaker. Batting second and DHing is Greg Brock. Batting third, playing first base is Eddie Murray. Batting cleanup, playing third base is Mickey Hatcher. Batting fifth in left field is Kirk Gibson. Batting sixth, playing shortstop is Alan Trammell. Batting seventh in catching is Terry Kennedy. Batting eighth in center field is Chet Lamon. And batting ninth in right field is Glenn Wilson. Let's take a look at John Denny real quick. Uh, I get, you know, let's look at his log. Yeah, he did just pitch against Detroit. We beat him in that ball game. And uh, there's the win that he had against us where we went eight and two thirds. And then the loss uh, earlier in the season back in April where he gave up six runs and seven and a third. So uh, we've pushed him around a little bit. He's making his 14th start. He is their teammate. And as I mentioned in the last start, he did win the Cy Young for the Phillies in 1983 in real life. Uh, six and six with a three fitting ERA. 53 strikeouts in 97 and two-thirds. Opponents are betting 263. He's got a couple of complete games. Not much of a fastball, 87 miles an hour. Um, his ground ball average is around 42%, so uh, more of a fly ball uh, pitcher, which is always good for us. His fastball tops, uh, tops out at 87. He's rated in 86. A couple other pitches below average. He's 30 years old, and he's making the big bucks. He's making a million dollars a year through 1986. Here is the Indians defense for today. Only goal Glover in, uh, in the uh, field is Chris Bandalorian, the catcher, with an arm that is ranked 82, rated 82. Here is Sweet Lou leading off against John Denny. Three for 21 in his career against Denny. Will that loop and fall in? Nope. Be a running catch from the right fielder. Nice play by Pasqua. One down for Greg Brock. Brock batting 309 versus right handers. And he walks. That's why he's in the number two spot. Does find a way to get on base. And now Murray is 5 for 17 in his career with a home run. Uh, we did give him a day off, so he's well rested. We're going to let him take a cut here. This could be a, um, instead of hitting and running, this could be a double play. But I got a good feeling. There we go, base hit to right. Brock will go to third, and it's first and third with one down, and now we will hit run with uh, Mickey Hatcher, who does not have a, a hit in his career against Denny. That doesn't sound right, but it's right there in front of you. It's gotta be true. That's gonna be plenty deep enough to score Brock from third. 420 feet, <laughs> nicely done. 
We're going to tag up with Murray, and Murray coasts into second base. 420 foot shot to dead center field, and the Tigers take the lead one to nothing as Gibby steps in. He's batting 292 versus righties, and he pops it up on the infield. The Dibber camps under it, makes the catch. We go to the top of the second. one nothing Detroit on the sack fly from Mickey Hatcher. Now, I like the way this lineup is put together now for the Indians. Uh, taking Norid out, it makes uh, sense for Hayes to be, to be in the fifth spot uh, and Gray being in the third spot. Maybe the only thing I would change is somehow having Benilla leading off with his great batting average, I'm not sure. Maybe or, or have him batting ninth, so you go from 300 to 300. But um, actually, pretty good job by the game switching out Norrid for Gray. Von Hayes lines it to center field, where Lemon makes the catch. One down. Here's the Bandalorian, Chris Bando. Ground ball to short. Trammell makes the play. This is the first time all season that I've noticed, anyway, that Whitaker's uh, defensive rating has surpassed Trammell's. They're usually exactly the same. Two down for Jerry Turner, who's been tough against us all year. There's a double into the gap. He legs it into a triple. Nicely done for Jerry Turner, his second triple on the season. And he is 90 feet away with Juan Bonilla. Uh, not the um, not leading the American League in batting average anymore. It's actually Roy Smalley um, of Boston. If you pull the outfield in, a base hit is going to score anyway, but if we can prevent a base hit from dropping in, uh, that would be nice. Ground ball to first. Murray should make the play. He does. And we go to the bottom of the second inning. Trammell leading off. It's Trammell, Kennedy, and Lemon. Here's Trammell. Trammell's got a home run in his career against John Denny. And he walks. See, this is what we need to do. We need to be more patient. That's something that Trammell does not do well. Uh, only his 17th walk. I mean, he's a career high of 51. So not particularly great. Okay. Here is our catcher. Terry Kennedy, who has been absolutely amazing uh, in all accounts, as he strikes out and Trammell steals second. So he plays him, and he misses on the hit and run. Trammell gets his seventh stolen base of the year and is in scoring position for Chet Lemon, who hits Denny pretty well. He's three for five with a home run and two walks. Ground ball to third. He gets past the third baseman, Trammell. Scores from second, and the Tigers are up two to nothing on the RBI single from Lemon. Somehow Romberg let that get by him. I don't know if it took a bad hop or what, but somehow uh, he missed a pretty easy ground ball. So we're going to hit and run here with Wilson. He struggles versus righties. Um, there's no way this is the first time they faced each other. Oh boy. Okay, there we go. With an 0-2 count, I thought for sure he was going to miss and maybe Lemon would get gunned down at second. Instead, uh, he grounds to second base and Lemon is in scoring position for Whitaker. Let's see if we can add to the lead with Sweet Lou, two down. And Le uh, Whitaker strikes out, looking to go to the top of the third. 2 nothing Detroit now. As the Dibber leads off, he is batting 155 versus right-handers. He's making Glenn Wilson look like Babe Ruth. Base hit. Oh, no, it's going to be snagged by Whitaker. I thought for sure that was going to find its way through, but Whitaker ranges to his right and makes the play. Nicely done. Helping out the pitcher. Father needs all the help he can get as Romberg gets another hit. Third hit of the day for the Indians, and Romberg has two. Will he be going here? He's already got one stolen base today. Pegel taps it right back to Filer, and he 
bobbles it, and everybody's safe. Oh, boy. Filer is his own worst enemy. First and second. One out. A double play can get us out of it. Pagel doesn't have good speed, and neither does Gary Gray. I remember this 1983 card very well uh, from being a kid. I'm like, is this name Gary Gary? I was a dumb kid. Uh, line out to first, and Pagel gets back. Two down, and here's where things are going to get tight. With uh, Pasqua up, we know he's got a lot of power. Leads the team, uh, co-lead with Turner with eight home runs. And a ground ball to first. There we go. Good job. Filer digs himself out of the hole. We go to the bottom of the third. With Greg Brock leading off. Brock this monster. He's been quiet lately. He's 0 for 2. Two walks in his career. Versus Denny. And there's a base hit into center field. Do we want to go for 2? Nope. We don't. Now, Murray got a hit last time up. We showed some faith. It came through. Let's let him take a cut here, too. Again, we could hit and run. And he flips it to left. There we go. Murray. Coming through with a base hit. We are going to hold Brock at second. Now, Murray had the last game off, but the game before that, he went three for four. And he's two for two today. His average back up to, to, to 293 is what I'm trying to say. Okay, first and second, nobody out. Here's Mickey Hatcher. Sack fly, RBI, first time up. And he pops it straight up on the infield. That is about as high as it can go. And the play is made by the second baseman, Bania. So, wasted opportunity there. It's first and second now for Gibby. Gibby, three for 12 in his career versus John Denny and a ground ball to short. That's an easy double play. How many double plays has Gibby grounded into? Six. A career-high six already. So that's bad news. Okay. We go to the top of the fourth as the Indians keep the Tigers off the board for the first time. Von Hayes leading off. It's Hayes, Bando, and Turner do up. Filer jams Von Hayes, and it carries to shallow left field where Trammell makes the catch. Von Hayes, I think he's a pretty damn good hitter. He's one of my favorite players from this era, but for whatever reason, uh, this game does not do him uh, any service. Batting lousy 237, and the Bandalorian just cranked it. Was praising his uh, teammate. And Bando hits his sixth home run on the season. And it's 2-1, Detroit. Next up is Jerry Turner. He's betting 336 versus righties. And as I mentioned before, he had the triple. He always hits as well as he walks there. And uh, we are going to pull the third baseman in. Now, I don't think he's going to bunt, but he could. And if so, we might be able to get a double play here. Nope, that's a, into the gap. Turner should score from first. He does. It's a RBI double for Benia, and the game is tied. That is Benia's 18th double on the season. That's more than any Tiger will probably get uh, the entire season. Okay, so we're all square at two. And here's the Dibber. We're going to pull the outfield in this time. Try to prevent Benia scoring on a hit. As the Dibber bounds it into the ground. And Whitaker's only play is the first. Benia advancing to third. So Romberg's up. He's two for two today. Pulling the outfield in once again. So nothing drops in. And Filer strikes him out. His second K of the day. We go to the bottom of the fourth inning. It's all tied to two with Trammell, Kennedy, and Lemon do up. Here's Trammell and a base at the left. There we go. That's the Tigers' fifth hit of the day. We're not going to go for two, but we are going to hit and run. 
Try to get this lead back. Here's Kennedy. He struck out last time he tried to hit and run. Here he hits a grounder to second, and Bania's only play is to first as Trammell advances. And another shot here for Lemon to drive in a run. Lemon again, four for six now. Oh, he crushes it! Nicely done, Chet Lemon coming out of his uh, slump since he's been traded to us. Slowly getting that average up. He's got three home runs now. And the two-run home run gives the Tigers a 4-2 lead. Nice counterattack by Detroit. One down for Glenn Wilson. And Wilson hits a grounder to Romberg. There's out number two. And we are back to Lou. Lou, 298 with nine home runs for a leadoff, guys. Pretty solid. Third walk of the day from Denny as Whitaker takes first. I kind of want Whitaker to attempt to steal, but I think under the circumstances, we let Brock do his thing. Oh, he pops it up. That was a nice curveball for him to crush. Instead, it's just a high pop up to short. And we go to the top of the fifth. Tigers take the lead back. It's 4-2. to two. It would be nice if we could get Filer uh, through these next three batters, but there's a lot of lefties coming up. And it all begins with Carl Pagel. He's batting 284 versus right-handers and a base at the left. Oh, and he stretches it into a double as Gibby wasn't quick enough getting it back in. It wasn't like he was loafing. He just sort of forgot what he was supposed to do with that, I think. Uh, Pagel, that's his 11th double in the season. And now Gary Gray has a chance here to get one of the runs back. So the double play is off the table. And we have to be play him honest with his power. Here we go. Ground ball from Gray to short. Pegel has to hold. And there's one down. Next up is Dan Pasqua. We're going to play straight away for Pasqua. I guess I could walk him. The way we get Hayes out, we might have a double play situation, but... We don't want to create anything more challenging for Tom Filer. He's about to defile himself here on the mound. There's a fly out to left and a chance here for, for Filer to get out of it and leave with the lead. Um, Von Hayes over two in his career now against Filer. And he walks him. To get to Chris Bando, who absolutely crushed it his last time, uh, we are going to guard the lines here. Where is it at right there? Uh, we're going to guard the lines against an extra base hit. We don't want the run scoring from first to tie it up. We'll give up a single and let Pagel score here. Here we go. Chris Bando. Ground ball to first, and Murray makes the play. So, all in all, an average performance from Filer. We go to the bottom of the fifth. Here is Eddie Murray leading off. He's having a hell of a good day. He's two for two. And he hits a can of corn to center field. As Von Hayes makes the catch, one down. Mickey Hatcher up next, still looking to break through against John Denny. Weak ground ball to first. Hegel makes the play. Two down. That's going to bring up Kirk Gibson. And Gibby lines at the center. Would like it down? No. Good play by Von Hayes out there. A 1-2-3 inning for Denny. Haven't had too many of those today. We go to the top of the sixth. Um, now, we got Turner, who's a problem. But then we got Benia and the Dibber. Why not let Filer go one more? The worst thing Turner could do is hit a home run. Because I don't want to bring in a lefty just for one batter, right? Here we go. Here's, uh, here's Filer versus Turner. Round ball to second. Okay. There we go. Now we'll play it by ear. Here's Juan Benia. He's got a hit today. One for two on the day. And a one-two count. 
line drive to left field. And the number nine hitter, Jerry Dibzinski, batting 167 overall. I was looking, um, the uh, Houston Astros catchers in real life, they have um, Maldonado and they have uh, Castro. Are there two catchers? Maldonado's batting 140 and Castro's batting 104 this year. The worst catching tandem in Major League Baseball. And Dibzinski strikes out. There we go. So that will be it for Tom Filer. He goes six, giving up uh, six hits and two runs. A couple of walks in there. Not a bad performance. One of his better ones, actually. We go to the bottom of the six with Trammell into the gap. It won't get to the wall, but he still might be able to stretch it into a triple. And he's out at third. Oh, man, I can't believe that happened. Oh, man. Von Hayes, he's a five-tool player. I, I get what I deserve on that one. Man, he's out there winking at me and saying, go for it. And we did it, and he was out. That is a double for Trammell, and that is his sixth on the season. And I hope that doesn't change the momentum as Terry Kennedy finally gets a chance to swing away instead of uh, having to hit and run, and he gets a base hit. So back-to-back -back hits for what it's worth. And that would have been an RBI if we'd left him there. Okay, so, I mean, we have to let Lemon take a cut here. He's 5 for 7, two home runs. Now against Denny, he just hit that two-run home run in the fourth. And he pops it up in the foul ground on the third base side. Romberg running it down. Actually, it's the shortstop Dibber coming from behind to make the play. Two down for Glenn Wilson. Wilson 0 for 2 today. And he hits a grounder to short, and that'll do it. Let's take a look at the in-game stats. Player of the game so far, kind of a tough call. Um, I mean, Trammell's 2 for 2 with a walk and a stolen base. Lemon's 2 for 3 with a home run, and I believe he has our game-winning RBI at this point. Um, we've got uh, two righties and a lefty coming up. So we're going to bring in a right-hander. And that right-hander is going to be Roy Thomas, who has been absolutely uh, fundamental to our last, uh, what, three weeks. Uh, this is his eighth appearance. He hasn't given up a run. Oh, boy. Uh, nine and two-thirds innings. Only three hits. Four walks, five Ks. Opposed to betting, oh, 97. He's making his O face on the mound. Fastball tops out at 91 miles an hour. It's a rated in 83. He's 29 years old, and he goes to arbitration next year. So we're going to bring in Roy Thomas. Good job by Tom Filer in line for the win. But he's going to have to go after Kevin Romberg. He's two for three with a strikeout today. Off the end of the bat as Romberg flips it to right, and Wilson makes the catch. One down. Okay, here's a challenging at bat. It's Carl Pagel. He is one for three today with a strikeout. A ground ball to Tram. Trammell throws him out. Two quick outs for Thomas and Gary Gray steps in. He's over two with a walk. And he sends a high fly ball to left. Gibby. Camping under it, making the catch. A great inning. From Roy Thomas, 10 and two third innings as a Tiger pitcher without giving up a run. We go to the bottom of the seventh, and it's the top of the lineup with Sweet Lou leading off. Uh, John Denny had 83 pitches, so he's in no danger of uh, being taken out on his pitch count anyway. As uh, Whitaker hits it right back to John Denny. We got off to such a good start with taking a lot of pitches. And uh, now we're swinging at the first pitch like Greg Brock just did. I guess you can't argue with the results. We are winning the ball games, 42. And Eddie Murray, a ground ball back up the middle, and Murray is now three for four today. And uh, what is his average up to now? It's up to 295. So he's got back-to-back three-hit ballgames. Let's see if Hatcher 
Couldn't get a hit today. He's got an RBI off a sack fly. And he flips it to right. So we go to the eighth. Bunch of lefties do up. So we're going to take out Roy Thomas. And we're going to bring in Dave Rucker. Um, I'm doing. I'm choosing Dave Rucker. At this point of the season, now that all of our uh, relievers have been rested, I tend to go who has pitched the least amount of innings uh, that throws either lefty or righty. And it, it's going to be Rucker, who is the setup guy anyway. So it all falls into place. Here is Dave Rucker. Now, Rucker, we should also point out, has pitched in 25 games. 26, including today. So it's not like he's not getting run out there. He is, and he's been great. His splits. Uh, lefties are batting 243 against him. Righties also pretty decent against. So we like you. We like you a lot. Here's uh, Dan Pasquale batting 160 versus left handers. Oh, he gets a hold of weights on that slider and uh, sends it to center field 359 feet. One out. Here's Von Hayes batting 101. He's offering us hitting 101, and he walks. Okay. Well, he taught Rucker a lesson in patience. Runner on first. Here's the Bandalorian. Now, he's going to turn around and bat right-handed. Uh, not as scary from the right side. He's batting 200. Striking him out. There we go. Good job by Rucker. And now Jerry Turner, who's one for two with a walk today, and he bats 156. Versus lefties. Ground ball the first. Hard hit ground ball. Murray snags it. He's a gold glover. That's what he does. Makes the play. We go to the bottom of the eighth. We have Gibby, Trammell, and Kennedy do up. And Denny at 90 pitches now. Not a terrible performance. As Gibby strikes out only the third K for Den Denny today. Not a good game for... Gibby, another Ofer. At least he doesn't have the golden sombrero, do they? And then Tram hits a ground ball to first. That's the first time he's been put out. Two down for TK, Terry Kennedy. And he sends a fly ball to the left. And then he gets a 1 2 3 inning. He's going to try to close the ball game out, probably at this point. Oh, no, that's it. The Tigers have the lead. So technically a complete game, I guess. We go to the top of the ninth, and now we have the righty. So we're going to bring in Roger Weaver, just recalled from AAA. This will be his first game back. And you can see here, he's got uh, 20 games pitched, 3-2, 332 ERA. More walks than strikeouts, but, you know, we tend to intentionally walk with him occasionally. Uh, opponents are betting 206 against him. He's got 11 saves and one bluey. Fastball tops out at 89 miles an hour. His sinker is his best pitch, so he gets a lot of ground balls for that sinker. Also has a decent splitter. Uh, and he goes to arbitration at the end of the year, so we're going to have to pay him or possibly trade him or lose him at the end of the year. Maybe. Who knows? Okay, so he's we're three outs away. It's Bonilla, the Dibber, and Romberg, who between them have no home runs this year. Juan Bonilla leading off. Ground ball up the middle. Good range from Trammell. There's one out. Dibzinski up next. He's 0 for 3 with a K today. A line drive to left. Gibson makes the catch. And the Tigers... Or one out away with Kevin Romberg. He's two for four today. Struck out once. He also, well, see, he also made an error, but he didn't make an error. The ball just got past him on a bad bounce, perhaps. And Romberg sends a fly ball to the left, and that's going to do it. A quiet ninth for once. Tigers win four to two. Handshakes, but slaps, slap mistakes. All right. Well, this is. Um, I hope it's fun for people to still watch this. I know that. I think. I, I believe that probably some of the pleasure from watching these games comes from me getting angry and losing my mind, but we just haven't had a lot of adversity this year uh, other than a couple of injuries. Um, so the Tigers win 4-2. We're feeling good about ourselves. We're 42-17. and 17. 
Let's take a look at the standings. Tigers now have an eight-game lead over New York. Uh, Boston putting together a win streak, uh, but not really gaining a lot of ground. They're ten and a half back, uh, but now in third place. Uh, California four and a half up on Seattle. National League, if you want to take a quick look. Uh, the Mets stretching the lead to five over Chicago, Montreal, and Philadelphia's five and a half back. Atlanta with their half a dozen trades in the last couple of weeks hold the uh, lead in the West. So let's take a look at headline news. It's Brainiac Baseball Daily Beat. We have a new staff writer. <laughs> it's, James, it's James Kenny. What does James Kenny have to say for us today here? He wrote an article about how Detroit beats Cleveland with the lead now eight. Yeah, he's long-winded in his messages. You can see here he wrote a lot. Uh, in fact, he went right off the page. He didn't care. James doesn't stay between the lines, folks. Um, hitless performance, Pasqua. Um, he did man manage to mention Tom Filer and then uh, Eddie Murray. Uh, three for four with no strikeouts. Probably could have been left unsaid, James, but that's fine. Uh, Murray, seven for 12 in his last three games, which is important to note. Trammell, he did some stuff. Not Can't read it all, though. Uh, that's it for today. James could only had time for one article. <laughs> Let's take a look at the transactions. Any more trades? Yes, there is a trade. This time between Baltimore and the Mets, and I'm not sure any of this is important. Uh, Tony Arnold, the only AAA pitcher they have other than um, Jim Palmer. They're trading away another pitcher. That doesn't make any sense. He's not even going to arbitration. This is a guy they could use. And they sent him to the Mets, where he's going to be in double-A for them. And in return, they get the uh, punky shortstop. It's Jim Whalewander, former Detroit Tiger draft pick, known for being a punk rocker. He had a mohawk long before that was cool. Or I don't know, maybe it's always been cool. But um, Yeah, so he's not looked that, I mean, not a lot to go on here. I think the only thing that matters is that the Mets threw in a shit ton of money. Um, which is going to help Baltimore out a lot. So that's a smart move by Baltimore. Where are they now with their money? See, they were at like $20,000, and now they're at 800 Well, if they had seven, made 790 so what are they at? That was uh, They had $70,000, somewhere in that range. Quick math skills. So, yeah, they were, they were not looking good, and they were projected to lose money. So they would have eventually probably lost whatever money now they don't have to worry about it now they can resign free agents so um, a smart move giving away a decent pitcher uh, to the Mets for somebody who had money and uh, all they had to do is give up a, a player who's never going to make it to the majors okay let's get back to the Tigers we'll pull up the box score and get out of here thanks for watching guys like and or subscribe to the channel Tigers win 4-2 player of the game probably Chet Lemon uh, he hit the home run that gave us the lead uh, at least we could do is give it to Chet Lemon, right? Yeah, he did. Got the game-winning RBI. Fourth home run on the season. Played some good defense out there today, too. Three RBI. Absolutely deserves it. Tom Filer gets the win. Goes six. Goes to three and one on the season. And Roger Weaver, a very quiet ninth inning for his 12th save. John Denny, kind of a hard luck loss there. Gave up a handful of hits, though. He goes to six and seven. The Bandalorian hit his sixth home run on the year. So uh, that's going to be it. We're going to come back tomorrow with game two of the three-game series. Until then, everyone, have a great night.